This week I built a new AI assistant, a personal car mechanic you can chat with. If your car has any issues, you can simply explain the problem and it will give you professional advice for free. The assistant works surprisingly well even if you explain things vaguely or if you start discussing multiple issues. Plus, it supports OBD error codes, so you don't have to go to a professional mechanic to diagnose minor issues with your car. You can just buy a 20-30 pound scanner from Amazon, download codes from your car and discuss the issue with the assistant. Let me give you a quick demo and then I will explain how it all works. Let's start with an interesting issue. Imagine our car has an error code of P0219, which means the engine was revved over its limit. My friend sent me a YouTube video showing how to disable the rev limiter in the car. I followed it and now my car sounds like a proper racing car. I do however now have this error code, so I was just wondering if I damaged the engine. Hi there! It sounds like you may have caused an engine overspeed condition by disabling the reverend limiter. This can cause the engine to reverend beyond its normal operating range, which can cause damage. My friend knows a lot about cars, he watches loads of YouTube videos on them, and he said this mod is absolutely fine. I think I'm going to trust him on this one. It's always great to have a friend who knows about cars, but I would still recommend having the code diagnosed and repaired. Even if the mod is generally safe, it's possible that there could be an issue with your particular car that could cause damage if the mod is done incorrectly. So what could possibly go wrong if I rev the car a bit higher? If you rev in the car too high, it can cause the engine to overheat, which can lead to serious engine damage. In addition, ruining the car too high can cause the engine to misfire, which can lead to further damage. Can you recommend a safer way to make my car sound like a racing car? Sure. If you want to make your car sound like a racing car, you can upgrade your exhaust system. A new exhaust system can give your car a deep, throaty sound without risking any damage to the engine. I'm really happy with this response. The assistant gave good suggestions and I think she handled the request very professionally. The next error code will be 562, which means that the system voltage is low in the car. But let's pretend we don't know that. I have this error code, can you summarize what it means? Sure. It looks like you have a system voltage low issue with your vehicle. This is most likely caused by a faulty alternator, but it could also be due to high resistance in the cable between the alternator and battery. That's a bit too technical for me. Can you simplify it slightly? Sure. It looks like your vehicle is having some electrical issues that could be caused by a faulty alternator. To diagnose the issue, you should check the charging system, alternator belt, and voltage at the battery. We actually have an old multimeter. Could that help diagnose the issue? Absolutely. You can use a multimeter to check the voltage at the battery. The voltage should be between 13.2 volts and 14.7 volts. Okay, it seems like the voltage is below 12 volts. Do you have any tips on avoiding draining my battery in the future? Absolutely. To help avoid draining your battery, make sure to turn off all lights and accessories when the engine is off. You should also disconnect the battery when the car is not in use for extended periods of time. Again, good understanding of the issue as it knew well that a multimeter can be used to diagnose the problem, even though this is not covered in the data. Next, let's try and explain an issue with the transmission, but this time without an error code, so the assistant will need to search the entire dataset. I think my car is stuck in gear 1. It's kind of annoying as the car is loud and goes slowly. Is this an easy fix or a serious issue? Hi there, it sounds like you're having trouble with your car being stuck in gear 1. I had a few things in mind that could be causing this issue, but the most likely cause is a generic powertrain diagnostic trouble code. This typically applies to vehicles equipped with an automatic transmission, and it's more commonly seen on VW and Audi vehicles. Okay, that seems like a few possibilities. Is there anything I can do to verify the problem? Absolutely. Depending on your OBD2 scanner's capabilities, you could monitor the gear position and verify the functionality. It will be easy to tell if your transmission is shifting or not by its drivability. If you have it floored and it accelerates painfully slow, it's probably stuck in a high gear. And what about the transmission liquid? Do I need special tools to check that? No special tools are required to check the transmission liquid. You can use the dipstick, if equipped, to check the level of the automatic transmission with the vehicle running and in park. This procedure varies a significant amount. Maybe this is all fine and I can just keep driving the car like this. The engine is a bit loud but I can still reach 25-30 miles an hour in town. While it is possible to keep driving the car like this, it is not recommended. The engine will be working extremely hard to keep up the desired speed, and engine damage is highly likely in these events. It's best to get the issue fixed as soon as possible. 
I think she did really well here. She understood the problem and helped checking the transmission fluid and then advised us not to drive the car. Let's now explain an issue with the oil pressure, which could be quite serious. So I have the oil pressure warning light on and I can hear weird noises from the engine. Can this all be normal? Hi there. I had a few things in mind that could be causing the oil pressure warning light to come on and the abnormal engine noise, but the most likely issue is that the engine is not getting enough oil pressure. The oil pressure sensor is sending a low reading to the powertrain control module. Is there anything I can do to verify the issue and check something? Yes, the first thing you should do is check the oil level and condition. If the engine has not received oil changes using the proper viscosity oil and at regular intervals, the likelihood increases that the problem could be worn internal components. That sounds a bit complicated for me. You mentioned using the correct viscosity oil. Can I just taste it and see if it's the right type? No, I wouldn't recommend tasting the oil. You can check the viscosity by looking at the oil label, which should indicate the type of oil and the viscosity. Okay, this doesn't sound like a serious issue to me. Maybe I can still do that road trip this weekend to Cornwall. I wouldn't recommend it. If the engine oil pressure is actually too low, the engine can be permanently damaged. It's best to get the issue checked and repaired as soon as possible. Okay, I think she clearly understood what the issue was, gave us suggestions, and most impressively, didn't let us play the issue down, and insisted on getting the problem checked out. Finally, let's see how she handles slightly weird and unrelated requests. I poured some coffee on the seats yesterday, and I was able to clean off most of it, but there's a lingering smell. What can I do with that? Unfortunately, coffee can be difficult to get rid of the smell. I would suggest using a fabric deodorizer or an enzyme cleaner to help remove the smell. If that doesn't work, you may need to have the seats professionally cleaned to get rid of the smell. Sounds good. Any idea on how I could entertain my kids on our six-hour drive to Scotland? That's a great question. It sounds like you'll need some activities to keep your kids busy for that long of a drive. Some ideas are playing car games, having a sing-along, or letting them watch a movie on a laptop or tablet. You could also bring some snacks and drinks to keep them happy. Any recommendations on day trips around Glasgow? We love nature and food. Glasgow is a great place for day trips. If you're looking for nature, you could visit Loch Lomond and the Trussocks National Park. It's a beautiful area with lots of trails and scenery. For food, you could visit the Glasgow Farmer's Market. It's amazing how she can answer and give advice on random questions like this. I guess the kind of stuff you would expect from a real car mechanic. So how does it all work? To make this happen, I had to collect and integrate a massive dataset of OBD error codes. These contain detailed information on several thousand car-related problems, breakdown causes, along with technical descriptions, symptoms and possible solutions. But instead of needing years of experience to understand the problem, I used a GPT-3 language model to process all the data. GPT-3 is the same technology that powers ChatGPT, but a slightly different model. Now, the app has two ways to determine the most likely cause of the issue you describe. If you specify an OBD error code, the app will look up the exact problem with the associated information and use that as the context for the conversation. Simple. I actually bought an OBD scanner from Amazon and was able to connect to my car easily. But since there are no issues with my car, I got no error codes I could try with my assistant. If you don't have a code, that's also fine. The app can still do an AI-powered semantic search, which allows it to understand the meaning behind your description and find the most relevant entry from the database. For example, if you tell the assistant that your car won't cool down, it will still be able to predict that you have an issue with your air conditioning, even though you didn't use the exact words. After the app finds the relevant piece of data for your specific issue, I assign that to be the knowledge base, in other words, context for your conversation. Then comes the fun part, defining the assistant's personality and how it should respond, then putting together all the information to be sent. Each time we ask a question from the assistant, under the hood, this is the prompt we send. Definition of the personality, who is the assistant and how it should respond. Context, the information related to the issue found. Previous chat history, so we know what has been discussed already. Query, the most recent question from the customer. Based on this, GPT-3 is able to send us a response to be added to the conversation. And that is all there is to it. I hope you like this. I have more AI projects coming up, so stay tuned.